Well, let's go ahead and get started. As most of you know, my name is Jim Nugent. I am a Reiki master. I've been coming to this church for about on and off for two years and uh, kind of, well, solidly for the last two years and then off and on for a couple of years before that. And what I wanted to do, uh, you know, first of all, I wanted to thank uh, Rev Deb. She was here a minute ago, but I, I wanted to thank her for this opportunity to not only talk about Reiki and what it's done for me, but also why I believe in it and uh, how I believe it's helped others. So I wanted to thank her for that. As we get started, why don't we take a few minutes, close our eyes, take a deep breath or two. And while we do that, I'm going to read a, a Reiki poem that uh, I think is, is well worth starting off the session with. Our Reiki journey takes us many paths, many ways. It's a beautiful way to live day by day, enri enriching ourselves and others along the way. The Reiki journey guides our steps always. With Reiki, we bring healing. With Reiki, we are whole. With Reiki, we see others. As pure spirit, body and soul we can see clearly we see through love become pure vessels using our hands with reiki from above what a wonderful journey what a wonderful way the journey is just beginning we are launched today to go where man has never been before this is our destiny what we have been created for reiki emerald ray coming down from heaven above precious Reiki ray full of healing, power, and love. In such a time as this, in this day and hour, we are going forth in wisdom, healing, love, and power to touch those along our way. We will make a difference in our world each and every day. Yeah, that's really nice, thank you. Uh, Jim Carrey supplied that this morning. I'm glad he did. Thank you. So just a little bit about, about my Reiki or my, um, my healing journey is that, um, you know, this actually started back in 1993. I was in Scottsdale or the Phoenix area with some people and uh, I was just beginning my spiritual path. And uh, I was at a gathering of some people and this woman turned to me and she goes, you're a healer. You know, I, 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 I said, well, no, I, you know, I don't think so. And she goes, oh, no, I think you are. And she said, why don't you, s I I'm going to sit down here. And she sat down on a piano bench, and her back was to me. And she said, why don't you just take your hand and run your hand, you know, along my back and see if you feel anything. And so I did that. You know, I started at the top of her head, the crown, and then came down the neck. And, and all of a sudden, the palm of my hand turned cold. You know, it was just like there was air conditioning blowing on it. And then, you know, I moved to one of the, her shoulders and then kind of progressed and then something lower down on the right-hand side. And, she's, and so I said, okay, I'm done. And she said, okay, tell me what you felt. I said, well, the neck and then the shoulder. And then the, she goes, okay, well, the neck, I have a neck problem. I had a car accident and I had a problem with that. The shoulder, you're right there, you know, because I had, and so on and so forth. And so that was the first time that I was kind of introduced to that, you know, what maybe healing might be about. And so I didn't think too much about it. I thought it was kind of cool, but I kind of put it on the back shelf. And, and then, per, you know, jump forward about nine years, Jamie and I meet this woman, and she's a Reiki master and Reiki teacher, and she's giving a level one class. And she asked if we wanted to join. And I had heard a little bit about Reiki, really didn't know too much about it, and so we decided to do the class, you know, with Paul back in 2002. And that was kind of cool, too. But then I put it aside again. Because every time, you know, I always had kind of a running battle between the spiritual side of life and working for a living. And so I always chose to work for a living. I don't know. <laughs> you know, I mean, the corporate thing. So then, October 2014, I finally leave the corporate environment. But I had a friend that said, why don't you start asking God for true guidance? Really to be guided. How can you be of service? What's your life's purpose? What can I do as I move forward? And so I did that. And so pretty soon I found out about a class having to do with healing. 
and it was at Harmony Grove. It was in San Diego, and it's, it's like a weekend institute. It started Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And so I attended that, and as I met people in the class, I found out that they had just completed level one, and that the following Thursday, they were going to start level two, and then they were going to move on to level three and so on. And so I asked this woman that was teaching, you know, if I could join, you know, her level two, level three, and so on class. And she said, yes. And so as I look back, and I think it's kind of interesting about today's sermon or message, is that it's about guidance. It's about the next step. It's about trusting. It's asking for guidance. It's listening for that guidance. And as I look back over the last three or four years that I've been doing Reiki, that's exactly what I've experienced, is that I've been guided. And I think I've been guided to this point right here today, that I can share this. So, with that as the start, let's talk a little bit about what Reiki is. Well, first of all, it's an Eastern healing modality. It's actually started in Japan, you know, a couple of hundred years ago. But it also has some roots here in the Hawaiian Islands, because one of Master Asui's disciples actually came to Hawaii and was starting to teach people on the Hawaiian Islands. And then she eventually moved on to the west coast of the United States and it started to grow from there. Reiki, you can kind of break it down into two different words. Uh, Rei, that's, a, that's a, the source or universal energy. And then Ki is the life force. That would be prana, chi, you know, many of the other things that you hear from different types of healing. Okay? Reiki heals on four levels. The spiritual, the emotional, the mental, and the physical. And I mentioned, and I highlighted, you can't really see it here, but on the spiritual and the emotional level, I think as we move forward, they're going to see where more and more healing really starts on the spiritual and the emotional level. Emotional in the sense that, what do you say to yourself? Do you love yourself? Have you forgiven yourself? You know, you can't really love others until you can love yourself. And that starts with healing your emotional side and then healing the spiritual side, the meditation, the talking to God, the asking for direction, trusting, and so on. Then Reiki energy can be used to benefit many. You know, not only people, but also, you know, one of the things that I like to do, you can do, and I'll talk about this in the next slide, but you can send Reiki energy to people having surgery. So I have friends that send me text messages or emails, and they say, so-and-so is going in, you know, would you please send them Reiki energy? And so what I like to do is I like to fill the entire operating room with Reiki energy. I ask for Reiki energy to come down and be with the people, the staff, the surgeons, the nurses, and the staff that are doing the operation, and especially to be with the person being operated on. But it has tremendous power. I also give it to animals. If you have a dog, you know, anytime I come by and see your dog, I'm always giving your dog Reiki energy. I give it to my dogs. Um, you know, recently Jamie and I lost one of our dogs and, and it was on a Saturday night and, and I think she had a stroke and we just held her and I just gave her Reiki energy from the time it started to she took her last breath. But Also, I do it when I'm snorkeling, when I'm out with the fish. You know, I bless all the fish and, you know, love that sort of thing. <laughs> I see some nodding heads. I know people do that. Cindy, Chris... So, but it's any, it's the sort of thing that um, it benefits all, or it can be benefiting all. So what happens during a Reiki session? Well, first of all, as a Reiki master, you know, I have a massage table. It's out on our lanai. It's, it's a beautiful setting. I, I'm blessed to, to have that location. But the first thing that I do after asking you to lay down on the, on the massage table is I ask to be a clear channel. I'm not the healer, I'm just a channel for God's energy. And I ask to be that clear channel. I also ask for your guides and your loved ones, anyone that's passed over, to join us, to be a part of the healing process. Reiki can be either hands-on or hands-off 
or it can be distance healing. And usually I have kind of a sense, and I think this is probably true of most Reiki healers, is that almost before the session starts you have an idea as to whether it's going to be hands-on or hands-off. People like hands-on because they can feel the energy from the hands. That's what they tell me. But there are some people that prefer to have hands-off. And that's okay too. Reiki healing is intuitive. Upper body and lower body. Even if I'm working on your feet, if there's something, a problem that you're having with your upper body, the energy is still going to that point in your body. The healing's being done. Now, a couple of things that I do is that I work with chakras and energy clearing. I use a pendulum. And I start with the root chakra and I go to the crown chakra and I check to see if it's open. For me, a yes answer is that it rotates in a clockwise fashion. For a closed chakra, it will rotate in a closed fashion. So if I have a closed chakra, then I do Reiki over that particular chakra until it turns and confirms that it's open. But I do that with all, your, all the chakras. I'm also given spiritual guidance, and I think that's what was so interesting about the synchronicity with the, the talk this morning. Um, what I do is that when I have an appointment with someone, I touch in with their higher self. And this is really beneficial because it will, in, invariably, I will get a message that says, I need such and such from the, from the client. I'll give you an example. Uh, Jamie had a good friend that was going through breast cancer. This woman had gone through the chemotherapy. She had gone through a lumpectomy. And I started working with her as she just finished the lumpectomy and then was moving into radiation. And what was interesting is that on a Saturday morning before she came over, I went into a meditative state. I touched in with her higher self and I said, what does she need? And I simply got energy. I thought, well, that's kind of interesting. And so I just, you know, kind of put it aside and went about some morning things that I wanted to do before this woman, you know, uh, arrived. So the doorbell rings and I go to the front door and I open it up and this woman is standing in front of me and she is gray. The radiation has taken such a toll on her. She is ashen. And then it dawned on me, you know, okay, so this is what we're talking about is that she needs energy. So I put her down on the, on the massage table and it was almost like, you know, she was just sucking the energy out of my hands. I mean, she was just devoid. She needed that energy. And so afterwards, and session went on for about an hour, and we went downstairs and gave her a glass of water, and we sat and we visited, and, you know, well, how do you feel? And, well, I feel much better, and I feel like I have some energy now. But what was really interesting for me is that I could see the color return to her face. And if you've ever seen somebody that's really sick, you see there's kind of a gray or an ashen color. And so that's just one example. Um, but I have, and so that's a before session, but also we get information while the session's going on. I had one the other day, and it was starting, you know, the client was laying on her back, and I started to work, and, and pretty soon it was just like I was on a boat and I was rocking back and forth. It's a strange, it was kind of a strange sensation. I had never felt it before when I was working with someone. And then as I asked more questions of my guides, well, it was just like being on an ocean liner, you know, on a cruise ship where, you know, every once in a while the waves will be kind of strong and they'll kind of push you side to side as you're walking down the hallway. And that's what I was getting. And then the more I worked with it a little bit, then I realized, well, it's ocean, water, represents emotions. And then afterwards, you know, I said, are you having some emotional issues? And the answer was, yeah, I'm having some real, you know, kind of a tough time. And so that's an example of how you get, you know, guidance while you're working on people. Other times it'll be, you might have, I had one the other day where, um, you know, it was just, uh, I should massage your hands. And I usually don't do that as part of Reiki, but 
you know, and, uh, you know, as I thought about it, you know, her cuticles were kind of torn apart and she was, you know, nibbling on her fingers and that sort of stuff. But she was holding a lot of stress, a lot of pressure in her hands. And, you know, you build up lactic acid in these small knuckles. And so, you know, just to be able to work that out. And so it's, it's an interesting thing. I, I think the more you do it, the more you work with Reiki energy, the more you're open to, you know, other ideas and, and guidance and that sort of thing. Okay? So what to expect? Well, I wanted to put this on here because um, sessions and results. You know, as, you know, we are, for the most part, pretty um, instant, we're into instant gratification. We want to feel something now. And many times when you, after a Reiki session, you will feel the energy. You'll feel stuff going on. But I really think that what I've seen is that there is, uh, the client starts to relax after the second and the third and the fourth session. And so, and, and that's what people have related to me, is that things happen. You know, they feel the energy more, maybe they feel something happen inside them, you know, that sort of thing. But it usually, so you, you might feel something on the first session, but it usually seems to build so that you feel a little more on the second, a little more on the third, and a little more on the fourth, that sort of thing. Um, how often? You know, maybe once a week, once every 10 days, something like that. Cost? I work on a love donation. And I put this down just to give you some idea as to, you know, well, what is Reiki and how much is it and that sort of thing. I, I've been given anywhere from $20 to $100 for a session. I just ask people to put, you know, whatever they're going to give me in a little red envelope. They seal it up and then they put it in a, in a God box. And so it's after, you know, three or four different sessions that I, I collect that. I'm not, I don't do it for the money, but there is an exchange of energy. So, so with that it said, questions, thoughts, comments? How about from the other Reiki masters? Anything you want to add? Okay. Good. We all have our own paths that we're moving through, and this is the way that guides everyone from what they need. Yeah, yeah. I, say that a little bit louder because I think that's I think that's key. Yeah. Well, we're all on a path, and it's a it's a different path, and so the many paths to truth, and so as we all seek truth in life, don't get hung up in the path. It's the destination, the truth, and Reiki is one of those paths that give us the truth. That laying on of hands is modalities with Christianity and, the, and laying on of hands and all belief systems have this prayer works one God and laying on of hands so this unites all philosophies and I found it to be tremendous in addition into my life about 30 years yeah, yeah. so thank you yeah yeah so um, anything else any other questions thoughts maybe Yeah, it's u usually it's done private. Um, w what I like to do is I, I have a massage table. I have a little soft music, some Reiki music that I play. Uh, I'll sometimes write a, uh, light a candle. Um, and then, um, you know, occasionally uh, one of my dogs barks. But, you know, I, I try and control those too. But, um, and, and it's, you're fully clothed. Um, you know, if you would not like to have your hand, you know, my hands on you, that's okay. You know, and I usually sense that, but, you know, you can certainly affirm it. You know, there's also a sheet that you can go through. James has got, uh, Jim has got a couple here this morning that, um, you know, they're just different symptoms that you might have. You know, gives a little guidance, that sort of stuff, but, yeah. What's that? The crystals, I also work with crystals too on the chakras. And so, um, say a little prayer over the, the uh, chakra and then I give you a little crystal that you put on the chakra and, and so, um, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, 
So, with that said, let's try it. We'll just, um, we'll just put four chairs up. And, uh, yeah, there are four healers. And let's just have the healers stand one more time. We've got Jim and Evelyn and Chris and myself. And um, do you want to, uh, and I think we're going to um, do each session will be about three minutes. So if you wanted to go to one healer and then you, another healer and another and so on, you're more than welcome to do that. But we'll go until, um, you know, for about 55 minutes or whenever you get tired of us. <laughs>